Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and this is Mega.io. In today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, fulfilling or fullifying our API for our IoT dashboard. I'm not sure if that's the correct use of the word. But the point is, up to, well, up to now, our IoT dashboard's been a tad lacking because devices have been able to save variables to the um, IoT dashboard, but they've not been able to retrieve data and perform other commands. So in this video, we're going to be expanding the API to make it a full API. I say full, as full as it can be for now. I mean, there are lots of features you could include, but that goes off on a bit of a tangent. So let's do it. So as I stated a few moments ago, our current API can only be used to um, save data to the cloud or the IoT dashboard. But that's not really good enough for most IoT applications because a lot of devices like to read data. So for example, you could have two IoT devices cross communicate over the internet through an IoT dashboard where one of them's uh, setting a variable and the other one's reading a variable. And by doing this, we can create close, uh, close feedback loops and stuff like that. So it gets really cool. So what we're gonna do in our API is add a few commands. And these commands will be get, submit, clear, and delete. Now we've already covered the submit command because when the device wants to save some data to the cloud, it just goes, oh, here's a submit, you know, a request to put some data on there. But the get one is when we actually say, can you please give me the most recent value of a variable? Because remember, our variables consist of not a single value, but a historic value with a date, uh, date timestamp and a value. Now we could have a very complicated get uh, method whereby we can get specific data points, but for now we're just gonna get the most recent value that makes things simple and easy and can be quite practical in its own way. The clear command is one that essentially allows us to clear all values in a variable. So we can use this to get rid of unnecessary data that doesn't really need to be there anymore. For example, window open, window close status. You may only wanna keep five or six of those and you don't need to have 10 million values from the past 10 years. You just need to know exactly what the, what the state of the window currently is. So we can use a clear command to free up some data on the server. And at last but not least, delete. Delete's quite obvious, delete a variable. Sometimes it can be useful to delete a variable. And so we will implement this into our full API. Now, before we go into the code, we're going to be changing the file structure of our IoT dashboard ever so slightly. So currently we use a submit.php file for submitting data from IoT devices, but we're going to replace this from, from submit to api.php because that kind of makes a bit more sense because submit implies that you're only sending data to it and not get anything back. But this time we're gonna change it to api.php so when any device connects to api.php, they can make a get request, a post request, they can make command requests for deleting variables, clearing variables, stuff like that. So that is the first change we're going to make. And then we're gonna have this code in the api.php file. And as you can see, it's almost identical to the submit code we had earlier, but this time we have our variables, such as the variable uh, variable name itself and the data uh, value of that variable, the command and then the file name. But of course, depending on the command, we will execute different pieces of code. So if we're doing a get command request, we uh, instead go into the um, variable file, get the most recent um, entry, and then spit that back out using an echo command. If we're again submitting data, all we have to do is create our date timestamp, stick it to our data variable, and then put that into the file. And then we echo back the date time string because we believe that may be useful with devices that don't have real time clocks. Then we also have the clear command. Again, that just puts nothing into a file, but that gets rid of all the data. It's really it's a bit of a strange one. It turns out that with the file put contents function, if you don't specify a string as the data you're gonna put into that file, it puts nothing. I suppose it must just be an overwriting thing. So it's not an append, it's more of an absolute write. And then the last command is delete. And all this does is unlink the file, which is a bit odd. I would have just used a function called delete file or something, but apparently unlink is the, file, is the command you use and that will delete a file. Now, of course, that's the api.php file, but there's a second half to this, an API uh, code set for the Arduino, because if we've got a device that wants to talk to our server, we need to make some simple functions that make using the API easy. So let's see the functions. Obviously, the first one we have is get variable with the string of our name, and you'll notice it returns a string because none of the data on our server is stored as raw binary or integers or floats or longs or anything silly like that. Everything is strings and plain text. 
Now, when our server responds with the data variable, it doesn't just send the data variable, it sends a rather large header, which includes a bunch of metadata. And this metadata includes things like the current date time, the server version, the HTML version, uh, thing, your location and language. So we need to learn how to split these two together. And that is a very simple way of doing it. A carriage return live feed, carriage return line feed. So in our Arduino code, all we have to do is look for the location where this double carriage return line feed is, and from that location, we can get the data. And the other important variable for the Arduino is the set variable function. And again, this is uh, like the one we did in a previous video. It's a void function. We pass some data to it, the variable name and the variable value. And from there, all we have to do is uh, set the correct commands on the post request and the server will handle the rest. And there's no need to look at the return data because unless we want to do error correction and stuff like that, it's not really important. So that's all we have time for today in this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.